So welcome back, all of you, and Nana here, and then we are into the next day's program on this fusion order management implementation. So today we have Sindhil with us now. Sindhil can attend the training only on Saturdays because uh, from Monday to training, Monday to Friday, uh, he is uh, uh, actually uh, giving a support and implementation for a UK client actually. So he cannot join on those days because he reaches home only by around 11. So he is there, and then uh, what happens? Uh, he uh, he has uh, done a lot of things on this particular one. So he is implementing a uh, one. Which is, which is without GOP actually. And in this case, what happens, uh, uh, he wanted to have a hot picking of a particular sub inventory and then it has to bypass the uh, your picking rule actually. So he has done it using order management extensions actually. And similarly, what happens, uh, uh, on the other day we were trying that what happens, uh, only with the order date, the defaulting was working, but he has even succeeded in using the requested date also. <clears throat> with the requested date plus what happens is working. So, hey, Sindhil, uh, uh, if you don't mind, can you share your uh, email ID with other participants? Or yeah, sure, sir. Uh, yeah, sure, sir. Uh, what you do is you click on the chat message and then uh, you put your email ID over there now. So, all of the participants uh, can pick up his email ID and then you can write to them whenever you feel like. Okay, fine. So, he has agreed <clears throat> to share his email ID. That's great. <clears throat> so, thanks, Sindhil, for helping others. Yeah, sure, so you can uh, put up your email ID on the chat so that others will now pick it up. Okay. Chat, uh, okay. Click on the chat. In the bottom, there is a chat now. So you click on the chat okay. and then you, you paste for everyone actually. Okay. Were you able to see a chat yeah. at the bottom? No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can paste your email ID on that. So those of you who are working or you're going to work on it, what happens, he will be a great guide because what happens, he has done right from a scratch. The uh, structure and then what happens here and everything. So from a supply chain perspective, he is the uh, actually he is the in charge actually. For that. <clears throat> he is Sibi Sindhil. Yeah, your spelling is S H E N T H I L, na? Sindhil, na? Sir, numerology, sir. Numerology. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. That's okay. Good. <clears throat> so Sibi so you can even others can also communicate with him. Whenever you have any emails, he has already po posted his uh, uh, e email. Uh, uh, for others, what happens? Uh, those who are on, uh, uh, those who are not attending this training, what happens? I will now pronounce his email ID. It is cbsendil at uh, gmail.com. C i b i s h e n t h i l. C i b i s h e n t h i l. Sendil at gmail.com is uh, his email ID. So those who are because uh, others uh, cannot uh, watch this on the uh, what's called video. No, basically. <coughs> so let me go then. Uh, what happens? I start our activity now. <coughs> So let me share my screen. So yesterday we were discussing about uh, for the drop ship from where it is not picking up the what's called your uh, 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 org. <coughs> I discussed with one of my students. He told uh, he has given the answer actually. So he has given the answer. So we'll now see for the drop ship what happens. It has to pick up the org ID actually. <coughs> So I go there, <clears throat> you click on the procurement and then you go to the suppliers now, click on the suppliers now. So we have set up from uh, who is the supplier for this now, on the sales order itself now. So on this way, if you go and then have a look at it now, right? because it's not going to pick up the supplier and then you go to the managed suppliers and then query your supplier now. So it's D01 and then click on search now, you're searching for it now. <laughs> You're searching for it, fine, go there. <clears throat> and then D01 sub one is the one, fine, go there, click on edit now. So one of my students told me that this is the place where it's picking up actually. You go to the sites now. So click on the sites and then select it and then click on edit now. Go there. And then here, if you go to the site assignments, you go to the site assignments, here what happens, you now giving the shift location. And this location is already tied to the org actually. So this is used for automatic creation of the PO, and then what happens that that org will be based upon the supplier's default ship location, and you don't have any control at all. Fine. So whatever the ship location on this one day, the purchase order will be created actually. So that is what he told me. So it's a good information. Fine. So I have to thank him actually. <clears throat> good. So now this is what how the uh, this thing is there. So on the uh, it's called drop ship. The org which is not picking up. So let's go there and then start our activity today now. Go there and open up the 
version 3 of org this thing now so you can see So we are in the advanced order entry and the defaulting rules is now completed. Fine with that. And remember, Sindhil is able to make it work for even for anything actually. Fine. So discuss with him regarding what are all the basic possibilities on defaulting actually. Fine. So so many things are working for him actually. So we have completed the substitution item. Fine with that. So the line splits also we have completed. The DO customization for no reservation has been completed now. Fine. Uh, we created the order type and then what happens we have done it. Fine. The one third is on. The two variants of during shipping is also completed. Drop ship is also completed. Now before we go for the sales order approval. What happens? We will now go and then uh, uh, do the credit check. Actually, <coughs> the credit check has to be enabled now. So, for which what happens? First of all, you have to do the change in the customers, and then we have to collect it also. So, what happens? Whatever you have to do, it will not do it in one go. For the git item, also, what happens? All these things put together will not make a change, and then we will not perform one common collection. Also. So, first is the credit check. So, we'll go there and then see the credit check. So, we will now open up and cancel it. So, click on done and then come out of it now and go there. We'll go to this <coughs> Manage customers is the task. I click on exit and maintenance. So go there, go to the search, and then go to the manage customers task. So we are going to the manage customers task now. So manage, come on here. Okay, manage customers is the one. Fine, go there. <coughs> and I'm opening it up now. So let us now query our customer now. Find my customer is B01 and then click on search. We're searching for it. So the customer has come now. So I will now choose my customer over here now. Find select the customer. And at the account level, I'm going to enable the credit checks basically. Find select it now. And then go down. And then this is the account information and then this is the site level information. So I will now go to the account and then what happens? I will now do the edit. So for which what happens? This is the account level and then the site level. And then I am already selected my line against the customer now. So click on this hyperlink on the account number. If I click on the hyperlink on the account number, <clears throat> one six zero zero five is the one. I click on it. Click on that. Now here, what happens? We have to go and then uh, do the change actually. <clears throat> go there. So here, uh, is there any actions available here now? Mm, you go to the profiles. Basically. So payment details, communications, and relations do not have anything. I will now go to the profiles direct. Go to the profile history. <clears throat> so go to the profile history. And then here, uh, uh, what happens? We have to put actions and then what happens to correct the record. So go to the actions and then correct the record on the profile history of the account. And go there. So the actions and go there. So we are going to correct the record. It is now going to the correct record. So here, first of all, put a tick mark on the credit hold. The credit hold has been put a tick mark on the account profile. So we are putting a tick mark on the credit hold. And then you go to the late charges tab, you know. So we are into the profile area and then we have gone to actions and then we have done the correct record. And then afterwards, on the account profile, we are now putting a tick mark on the credit board. It is almost similar to what we have in EBS. Right? EBS also what happens, we are having first tab region, we having a credit board. And then you go to the late charges tab region. In this place, what happens, first of all, you go there and then give a save. Right? And sometimes what happens, a frequent save will be better actually, if I give a save. <clears throat> so we are given a save now. And, go down. and then afterwards, what happens, you go there, right? once you save it, what happens, no, it does not. The correction has gone on now, and go there, click on the late charges now. And then again, we had to bring it to a correction point. The correct record. Fine. We are not bringing it to the correct record. So the correct record has come now. Fine. Here, go down. So here, the currency settings I am going to give. Fine. Click on plus now. Fine. Click on plus. So drop down, and I will now choose the US dollar. Right. Conversion rate type is corporate. So the credit limit. Fine. It is the overall credit limit. Fine. There is a thousand dollars. And then for the individual order, it is hundred dollars. That means what? This customer is credit worthy only for this much of amount. If the on a single sales order, if it exceeds 100, what happens? It will automatically apply a credit hold. If all the sales orders put together is now cross this, what happens? It will not apply a hold also. And then the hold has to be relieved, relieved manually. That means what? The CSR is now going to book the sales order. The CSR means what? Customer service representative. Who is the person who is the front end between the customer and the company actually. So this guy, when he, when he books an order, the system automatically prompts that this guy is not worth this much of a money yeah, and then it applies a credit order. Then what happens? CSR will not talk to the customer. So why don't you give some advance, some 30% or 40% advance? Then what happens? I will not process the order. So the customer will not say, okay, fine, in about two hours time, I will not give it. So till the time, what happens? The code will be applied. 
And then what happens? It will be interfaced to shipping, but you cannot pick the item at all from what happens warehouse basically because of the hold actually. So the moment once he makes a payment, what happens? Uh, there is no direct link of the credit check along with the AR actually. AR might have applied the credit, what happens the, the advance given by the customer. But what happens that will not automatically relieve the credit 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 hold will not be removed automatically. We only have to manually remove the credit hold because of so many reasons that they never automated it at all. Right? So what happens there may be some other conditions also. He will be asking for what happens uh, lifting by flight actually. So that that item if you lift by flight what happens it will be very expensive. And so what happens you will be saying what happens I will not send it by what happens uh, uh, yeah, the blue dot or something some other thing. Right? And then uh, the negotiation is still going on. And because of which, what happens, even though he must have paid the amount, the advance requested by him, some of the terms and conditions are still under negotiation. And so what happens, the system does not remove the credit credit hold automatically. So it's always done manually now. So credit hold has to be removed manually. So the minimum state, this is all only for AR now. Dunning amount, everything is all for AR actually. So only from auto management perspective, only that OCL and CL are important. <clears throat> it is for the individual order, it's for the total, all the orders put there. So click on save now. So by which we have completed what? The credit checks basically. So remember, whenever you make any change on the customers, any any field you change, you have to refer, you have to what? You have to perform a collection. Collection and reference is a must know. Otherwise, what happens? Go there. So there is no done now. And then I will not give a statement. We will now do the collection and refresh it together along with other things. So customer credit check has been set now. Apart from that, what happens? We have to set two more profiles also. Then only it will work now. Profiles need not be collected actually. So profiles need not be collected. Now because sir, sir, one doubt, sir. Yeah. So order credit remain is nothing but the sales order value. Yeah. Okay. Sales order value. <clears throat> you have set it to hundred, right? Yeah. For a single order, hundred, and then all the all the orders put together is thousand. Okay. So whenever any of the any of the figures exceeds, what about you know giving nine orders for ninety? There will not be any any credit order at all. If the tenth or eleventh eleventh one, what happens if you holding because what happens all put together is no crossing thousand. Even though individual orders will be through, the eleventh order will be on a hold actually. Get it? Okay, very good. That's what now we will now go for a kit item. Actually. Now we are going to get a kit item. So, kit item I'm going to create now. Fine, go there. So, a kit is nothing but what happens a combination of things. We will be having a laptop. So, the laptop is basically shippable and billable actually. And then the, the carry case is only shippable actually. We are only going to is a free item. We're going to give it now along with the laptop. It's a shippable. And then the new the two year extended warranty is only what billable actually. It is not shippable. So the kit consists of these three. So let us now first of all create these things. No fine, so we'll now first of all create the items. No fine, we'll now take a copy of the D0110 fine, and then we'll okay. now So click on done now. Sir, in Fusion, you don't have the credit check processor concept. Is there? Okay. Okay, sorry. That's why we are doing it now. Fine. So credit check concept is there. So that's why what happens. Here. Probably in release 12, it was not there. Release 13, it has been introduced. It has been introduced only in release 13. It has in release 13, they have introduced the credit check. It was not there until release 12, actually. No, I'm saying, uh, like in EBS, there was a request you ran and uh, which released the holes automatically sometimes. No, no, no. There also releases manually released. Actually. We cannot release the hold automatically. Even in uh, Fusion, uh, even in the EBS, what happens? Uh, it is a, it's a five step process, actually. It's a big process, actually. And then uh, there, uh, you have to release it manually. You cannot release it automatically. Maybe some concurrence might have been developed. I'm not sure about it. But normally, what happens on the sales order level, the CSR will be releasing the whole manual. Here also the same concept. Maybe okay. some concurrence may be there. I'm not sure about it. I'm just making sure. Okay. Who is this? Who is this? <clears throat> Surajit, sir. Ah, Surajit. Okay, fine. Yeah, you make a check fine, and then uh, in uh, probably. Uh, what happens? Eve is. I'm not sure about the concurrence basically, but uh, we normally used to do only from uh, the sales orders. Okay, will you be showing us EBS kit item process as well, or only the fusion process? Only fusion, fusion only. Okay. okay. Click on it. In, yeah. In, in R12, mm -hmm. there is a credit check and credit hold. Both the functionalities are available on the customer master. Yeah. Credit check. The way you explain it will work as a credit check. Yeah. But if it is a bad customer, if the company treated hey, this customer, we should not ship anything. Mm -hmm. Then if you enable the credit hold, irrespective of any credit validation, mm -hmm. any, all the orders will be go on credit hold. Oh. Is it the functionality is there in the uh, fusion? No idea at all. But uh, what happens? I always used to enable both basically. But okay. enable both. Another way the amount is uh, achieved. What happens? It will not uh, perform any credit. It will not apply a hold at all. 
So you say that if the credit hold is applied, what happens? It will be holding each and every order. Now it doesn't happen. Last. It it only applies. What happens? There are five. Is a five point check actually. Find it. The five point check now. I can go there. I will not show you. I can go there. In uh, uh, since you asked for it, what happens? I will not show you right now. The EBIS documentation. You go to the order management. <clears throat> you go to the OMD four credit check. Now I have tested that. It doesn't work like that. Actually. The way in which you are explaining it doesn't work. It is not here now. Go back. D3. Credit check. Fine, go there. There are five points which you have to do now in this case. It doesn't work like this. Set the CL and OCL <clears throat> or the profile amount stabilization. Fine, go there. Afterwards, what happens? Put a tick mark on the credit check profile. Fine. You have to put a credit check on, on this one. And then enable the credit check for the payment terms. And then what happens? You create a rule. And then what happens? You place the rule on the what happens on the customer's order TDH. So only when you do all the five, what happens? The credit check is applied. So as we are saying, what happens when you put a tick mark on the credit hold? Actually, fine. the credit check is basically a credit hold. Uh, I'm not sure about whether there's a credit check or a credit hold. Actually, fine. you are saying. That uh, yeah, there is there is a two check box uh, on oh, the customer oh. credit check and also credit hold also. Oh, 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 oh. Here also we'll see. We'll now have a look at it. I'm not sure about it. So let us have a look at it also. Whether I have done a credit check. Yes, sir, we have two check box, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is Dasa, na? Yes. Yeah. We'll not see this topic today, maybe. Because we are using that functionality in R12. Uh, uh -huh. if, if that customer is a bad customer, mm -hmm. always we'll go and enable the credit hold. So mm -hmm. irrespective of any validation, all the orders will be on hold. Okay. okay. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so I was uh, checking only the credit. Okay, for many customers. I don't know how to it again now. <clears throat> Go to the customers D01 and then click on search now. This may be a similar one because there is not much of a difference as far as customer creations. Go there and then I will open up this profile now. <clears throat> bring it to the edit mode now. Go there. So you go to the profile history and then bring it to the edit mode now. Actions. Correct record, and then here it is now in the edit mode. Here itself, you will not see whether any credit check is there. Credit hold is there. Is the including credit check? Okay, fine. This is the, I will not remove it. Now, fine. It's very correct now. Fine. That's why I was told that whatever this is going to bring it, bring everything onto a hold now. I will not remove right. it, and then include in credit check. I'm bidding. Thank good. Thanks. Thanks, Desa. So include in credit check is the one. I'm now enabling it, and then you go to the late charges. There you have Yes, correct. Good. <clears throat> Any other mistakes I made now? Okay, good. <clears throat> so yes, correct. Go to the account profile. So it's almost similar to what we have in the AR wise. What happens? Almost all the same functionalities have been made retained over here. So including credit check and other orders, and then give a save and close. <clears throat> uh, sir, how the air people can release the hold from their end? No, we are going to see this. Okay, good. Uh, we are going to see this. Only CSR is the person who is going to release the hold. Fine. CSR is the ultimate authority. Okay. AR is only a money collecting team actually. They don't uh, involve all of this. They collect the money. <clears throat> and then the CSR is the ultimate uh, agency who is the front end for the customers from our uh, companies, uh, implementing companies. Uh, actually. Now we go there and then uh, do it now. Fine, go there for us. <clears throat> Close it now. And then now, in this place, I go to the what's called uh, product management and then go to the product information management. Let me create the items. So the first item is what? This item which I'm going to create. So D0110 laptop, I'm going to create profile. This is a bill and shippable item. I'm going to click on it now. Click on it. And then create it up. So go there. Organization is a D0110. Sorry, D0101. And then I'm going to put a root item class. Turn on OK. <clears throat> and now paste this item over here now. Item is pasted and then click on the description and then you're pasting it now. So, apart from that, everything is same. Fine, there's no change at all. Fine, go to the association straight away and then we'll now associate with the child order. Fine, go to the actions and then go to the certain act. So, let us associate with the child order. So, D011 now. So, D011, enter now. So, we'll now associate with the child. Click on apply and then click on that by which one else. The laptop is ready, which is a billable and shippable item. Fine, close it and then save and close. Now, we'll now go and then create next what carry case. Carry case is only shippable 
and then it is a free item, so it is not billable. Fine, go there. We'll not take a copy item, and then we'll go to the carry case. But click on create item. So click on create item, and then there we'll now say D01 <coughs> and then zero. So root item class. Okay. So after having applied the template, you paste the item over here, and then description over here now. <clears throat> and then at first come down and then go to the specifications and then go to the sales and order management director. So since this is a free item, it is not billable. Fine, go to the sales and order management. Remove the invoicing part of this. Fine, go there. So here, what happens? You cannot see the invoicing. You will not say dishum dishum. Invoice enabled is what? This is a, it is a status attribute. This is the item defining attribute. So we are making it as a no now. And then here also we are making it as a no. So this will never be interfaced to AR at all. And remember, majority of the things are item attribute based actually as far as fusion is concerned. So in Fusion, what happens? The majority item attribute based. So go there. Is what is invoices? No, no. And go there. And that's it. We go to the associations. <coughs> and then go to the actions. And then go to the select nat. And then this is D011. And then we'll also say it. So it's only a shippable item. It's not a billable item. Right? Click on that. So by which you know, complete no. Go there. So go, you know, make a check on the specifications again. Right? Sometimes what happens? It doesn't uh, get set actually. Because when I move the cursor, the value of this is also going on. That is okay. No, no is there and good. So we'll now go down, try to go up, and then we'll now save and close. So the carry case is now ready. We'll now go for a, what happens a two year extension warranty. So we are now going to offer a two year extension warranty. And go there. So the item name is what you go there. And take over the one. We'll now create it. This is only a billable item, it is not a shippable item. So we'll now click on create item. <coughs> So create it, I'm knowing it off and go there. So it's a D01 <coughs> 1. It's a root item class. Click on OK now. <coughs> and then paste the item over here now. And then click on the description. Paste it over here now. <coughs> and then go down. And then go to the specifications and go to the order management now directly. Click on the specifications and here, whatever you go to the order management now. Sales and order management. In the sales and order management, what happens? It is not shippable at all. If I go there, so here, if you see shippable, you make it as no. In the fulfillment area, what happens? I make it as no. That one tick mark is sufficient. Go there. Invoice enabled is what? This is the SS and go there. The ship model complete is yet to come now. Fine. Which I told me that uh, the ship set, arrival set, and fulfillment set are coming in. Uh, the July edition of this system now. Fine. It is a thirteen point nineteen point. 07, I think. Fine. 11 point, 13 point, 19 point, 07. So the ship set, uh, arrivals and fulfillments that are coming at the name, what happens? We have to enable the model complete and then yes, and then what happens? You can even see the top end. As of now, it will not work as it's not. So shippable is no. The warranty item, the shippable is no. Fine. Go to the associations and then what happens? We'll associate it. So go to the actions and then go to the self map. So we have an associate. It's a D011 and then enter it now. Select it and then click on apply and done. No, no complete. <clears throat> go there and then you go then what happens save and close so now we are going to create a kit item your kit is a one which is going to have what happens the laptop carry case as well as the two-year warranty so no, no, none, none of that uh, warranty item is a uh, inventory item is a transactable that's what i'm saying now uh, you can set anything but we are not really going to do the intransactable since what happens uh, shippable is no it will never interface it to shipping execution at all, even if it is yes or no, it doesn't matter. It's a good question. So, whether it is in inventory enabled or, or what happens, it is a transactable or what happens, a stockable, whether you enable it or not, order management will never interface it to shipping execution at all. Sir, sir will it hit the install base, sir? Huh? Will it hit the install base, sir? It's a good question, but I don't know. <laughs> this question was asked by uh, our. Uh, Belgium girl about the installed base, but I don't know whether the installed base has come in Oracle or not. It must have come, I think. So you have to ask the CRM team basically. <clears throat> so CRM will sir, give you whether. Uh, whether so since so since you are creating as a warranty item, yeah. I, I would like just I, I want to know that. That's, that's mm -hmm. awesome. I don't know. Fine. The question is a good question. So if you don't enable the stockable and transactable, it will definitely will not hit the installed base. But if you are enabling it for the inventory, what happens? Any inventory uh, items will be hitting the install base. So again, what happens? You have to talk to uh, what happens? The what's called the CRM team. So what is install base, sir? Installed base is the one where what happens? Let us say you are now buying this laptop. 
once when you buy a laptop what happens there will be an entry which will be having uh, taking place in the install base and then what happens let us say the uh, laptop is now warranted for 6 months you are buying it in madras and then you go to london so when you go and then what happens you give it to the service center what happens the install base will now give you that this item is now under warranty so actually all the crm modules are basically what happens the governing module of all the transactional modules like what happens you'll be having oracle sales you'll be having oracle service and then what happens you'll be having the manufacturing now so manufacturing sales and service what happens it will be a centralized uh, area so let us say uh, if a customer is now giving a defect that what happens when you press the button it is not switching on so the service team is going to what happens the oracle service will now repair the item but at the same time because it is now linked to the install base what happens the install base will now get a information that what happens because of this press button what happens you got a problem it is no service so once when the second occurrence of the same thing comes what happens the install base will now automatically communicate to manufacturing that there is a manufacturing defect so then what happens the correction activity will be immediately very fast actually. so all the crm models are basically what happens it will now communicate to the sales also if there are no uh, what happens a defect coming for the first one year what happens they will now ask the sales to what happens increase the warranty so from 3 year warranty they will now say 5 year free warranty because once when you give 5 year warranty what happens is that they will now see what is the expense for doing the warranty that will be calculated with the crm module and so what happens the sales will be enhanced actually so sales service and manufacturing are centrally coordinated by crm modules actually so for which what happens there is a entry for each and every activity on the item inventory the master module and then uh, what happens uh, if you anybody uh, no crm they will explain you fully all the functionalities <clears throat> there are so many functionalities are there crm has got plenty of you, that itself is a family of product actually like a planning family so crm is another family got it so you go there and then you know i have you created this item warranty item go there yeah we have created yes yes sir okay yes. now what happens i go for the kit item no kit i'm not going to get a kit now so kit will be comprising of laptop carry case as well as warranty and you know go on the get a kit now so you know so you know that click on take a copy click on it and then click on create it we are now going to apply a kit template now not the finished good template now so d010 class root item class go there so i will now dissue mode this template now if i click on it and then remove it now and then put the kit over here now. kit is been brought in i now brought the kit i remove the finished goods and then i apply kit now let me come on so the kit will be a parent item fine the kit will be a parent item and then there what happens you take copy it now fine there's a laptop kit now it's a parent item it will be having components so in the component part what happens we have to go on and add it now fine there's what else so i will now give a save at this stage once when you create it what happens give a save sorry here what happens the the kit template is not having all these things now fine so we have to give everything now fine go there make this active and then you know choose something fine go there is a b01 or whatever it is uh, go there click on okay now fine this thing has to be done now fine go there so this is a mandatory field and so what happens you give it now fine leave it as such now fine go there no loss so at this stage what happens you give a save the kit template has been applied to me you've saved so okay primary unit submitted is also not coming fine i'll not put the kilogram now give it a tab <coughs> that's coming fine go there the primary is also coming because the kit template has not been properly configured because of which what happens you know giving a lot of errors you can see in the top what happens yes d0109 laptop kit is now ready on this master job and remember these kit items will be basically configured in the design and drawing department right? the design and drawing department will say a kit consists of what 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 they will now say laptop the carry case and the external thing so later on what happens if something else is added they will now modify the kit only on the design and drawing department so the design and drawing department will be normally master organization so you won't be having what am i let us say we are having a master organization in delhi and then the delhi office himself what happens will be the design and drawing organization so no the place it will be created actually whereas once when you assign it what happens we will not be making a change we cannot make a change on the kit on the child docs so that way it works because they they only will now control the complete bill actually it is called a bill so here they call them as a structure actually so bill of ebus is now known as a structure so the structure is controlled on the centralized department no 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 let us not create the structure actually for this these three items i'm going to add right so d0010 11 and then 12 i'm going to add to the kit actually and go there so here what happens you go to the structures we go to the structures we are already we are in the master of remember if i go to the structure so click on the structure and then here what happens you go to actions <coughs> and then here what happens create so we are going to create you know right? the structure i'm going to create frankly concrete now 
and then you will be having multiple things. One is a primary, and then one is alternate. Fine, we have to make it the primary actually. Fine, so that is a primary structure. So we are not creating a primary structure. So click on apply and then add details. The components we want to add. So after having the name as a primary, fine, click on apply and add details. So we are not doing it now. So once when you apply and add, what happens? We have to choose the components below this. So I'm go to the actions and then go to select and add. So here, what happens? I will not query the item of fine. action, select and add. So item is what? D01. We'll go on and see. Fine. D01, 111213. Now fine. I'll say D011. And then query on this one. D011, I'm searching for it now. Fine with that. So we got all the three items. The laptop carry case and extended warranty is coming. Fine. So select it and then what happens? You click on control. Kachak. Kachak. Select all the things. So all three components of this are now selected. Click on apply. Click on OK. By which what happens? The components will be appearing on the bill actually. So the structure is ready. So we have what happens is 0109 laptop and then the remaining uh, things are added. Anybody? So none of this, uh, it's for manufacturing bill also we will create in the same place? Exactly. Manufacturing bill also will be creating the same place. I meant to learn manufacturing. So once I learn it, what happens? I will not teach you also. Everything wow. will be here. Find the options, mutual exclusive, everything will be set here only. <clears throat> oh, they added in the item also itself instead of having a separate exactly. bill. Exactly. Okay. The models, option classes, everything will be created only. And now I'm I'm no leading the I'm no learning the product configurator actually fine but don't I don't have time and mood to sit and then learn it now fine if uh, before the training ends if I learn it I will not teach you otherwise what happens whenever I learn I will not send the record to you okay <clears throat> product configurator I'm to learn it actually so we can yeah, add no, another uh, no, one second uh, one by one yeah it's yeah. No, it's Akbar here. Now, how about the resource and routing? It will be coming yeah, yeah. in the resources will be coming. I will be creating the resource now. Fine. I will be creating the resource now. Fine. We will be doing it while I'm setting up manufacturing. Resources are only in manufacturing, whereas bills are in item only. There is no separate place for creating a bill actually. Bills are coupled along with the item, and then resources are only in the manufacturing. Actually. Anyway, we will be setting up manufacturing also for demonstrating our back-to-back -back make actually. And then I have a minimal knowledge on this, and then with that all I want, I will now demonstrate that. And infusion routing is named as a work definition. Exactly. Yeah. The routing is known as a work definition infusion. Fine. This Vijay is uh, again, what happens uh, is uh, from Oracle development actually. Fine. So uh, if you want to establish friendship, what happens? You can now write it. Fine. You can even uh, write uh, and put a chat message and then what happens? Uh, get his details. Fine. Otherwise, if he is willing, what happens? He may even uh, give you his uh, mail ID on the chat. I, I don't want to what happens, uh, force anybody on this. Fine. It's all individual wish actually. Fine. That's what so I go there and then the orders. <clears throat> and then I have added this component and then click on done by which what happened. These three components are now added to the parent actually. This is the parent and this is the components of a kit. If I click on done now, I will all completed. So now what happens? You give a, give a save now. Right? Now parents are already trying to go there. So click on what happens. I will not give a save and close. Give a, rather, I will not give a save. So go to the save. <clears throat> Once again, I will not give a save and close now. Right? Now what happens, you query this item and then what happens, you assign it to the child or I will not go to the manage items and then query this item. So go there, go to the manage items and then let me query it. Fine. So D0109 and then give a tap and then I'm going to query for it. Fine. Click on search. It will be assigned to only one or So I will not hide it. No it's assigned to only one or so, so you go there and then click on the underline. Fine. Click on it and then it will open. Now I am going to assign it to the child or so go to this, go to the what happens. This one you can now see the master now. Find D zero one zero is the master. Now you go to the what happens associations and then associate with the child now. Fine, go there, click on it. And then go to the actions and then you go to select and add. <coughs> and then it is a D zero one one. And then you enter now. Click on apply and then click on done. Fine, which is no associated. Now what you do is you give a save and close now. Fine, give a save and close now. Now query via manage items and then query the child or no. Click on it. We'll now go to the manage items now. Go to the Any success items. will not get copied to the child also. No, you should not. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. What, that's why what happens, I'm not doing it. Now. So I will now make a search on this now. Click on search. Be having. Now the second line is what the D011 is a child or in which what happens, the structure is not existing. So what you do is you will now common the structure from the parent to what happens the master to child. So this is how we normally do it now. Fine. Remember, we will not be normally creating yeah, what happens a structure on the child. So, because the parent organization, the master organization, the design and department department is now basically responsible for it. So, once when the structure is created, they will now common it to all the child. So, the child or can only use the structure, but they will not modify the structure. Because that, that has to be the centralized area. 
So the Nigerian government is responsible for it. So we will not go there. And then we will not, on the 01, we will not do the common thing. Click on open the, I am now opening the 011 orgs item now. Item in the 011 org item. Right? So you see, in this place, I will not common, right? click on it now. I will not go to this place. I will not go to the structures and then I will not common it. So here actions and then what happens, I now create a common. Create from common. I will not create it actually. I will not even do the copy. So when I make a copy, what happens, you'll be in a position to modify. If that is a functionality, then you can do it. If you want the child to independently, what happens, I make a modification of the bill, what happens, you will make a create from copy. But that is not normally there. Right? Normally what happens, only the centralized department will now make a modification for all the child. But a car is there, and then they have made the change of the, what happens, the headlight as a powerful headlight. So once when I change it, what happens, it is now manufactured in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, everywhere. So everywhere, what happens, they have to use the same bill. That is why what happens, the commoning is the one. So it all depends upon how the inclined is using it. They may even go for a copy or a common, but common is the normal practice. Click on create, create from common. So create from common and no need. So item is what? You go there. It's a D0109 and then you tab no. So I will now copy from the master. Actually. Thank you, cancel now. So let me go and then copy from the master. Organization name is what? Sorry. I move it now. So I will not put the organization is what? D01. <coughs> and then give a tab now. I will not choose the master. So I will not use the master. So here I will not put the D0109 and then give a tab now. I don't know. Because previously the item didn't keep. Because what happened? There is no structure existing. And when I put the child org over here, when I put the D0109, what happens? It's not coming because the structure was not existing. So now what happens? The structure is now getting created by commoning. So for order management, the structure has to be either copied to the child or common to the child. Otherwise, what happens? It will not work at all. So we are not going to common it. So either it must be created or common in the child. <clears throat> so we are commoning it now. In the master work, I'm commoning it. I'm now on this work, not at all. <coughs> Click on OK now. <coughs> <coughs> the concurrent process is not submitted by which what happens it's all completed <coughs> it takes some time now and then afterwards what happens we give a save and close so once when this is done what happens it is now completed now so the kit is now created and then the individual components are created and then the structure is also created now we have to perform a collection so one one fg and three uh, components right yeah, this is also an fg and then this is also an fg uh, again, what happens is not a, is only a shippable FG, then it's only a billable one. The billable shippable component is a billable component. Bill only is a ship only. So go there and then let us now do the connections and refresh first. Because for the credit check also, we have made some changes to the customer and then this is also made. So for all these things, what happens is we will not perform what the collections of the refresh. Click on done now, come on up. It. We'll go there, you click on it, and then we'll not perform a collection refresh. So here. Yeah, you go to the supply chain planning and then go to the plan inputs and then it does not perform collection. Since multiple things are uh, done, what happens? I will not uh, collect all because if you fail, it will be very difficult now. So let me collect all. It takes some extra small time and go to the OPS and then let me collect it. Everything. Gada, Goda, Sabku, Chajai. Click on the planning and then bring it. You can optimize this now, fine. Like Dasa was saying, what happens if you can optimize on this collections, it will be excellent actually. That you have to study and then do it now. Fine, brother. And then click on submit. You need not have to collect all this, all these things, sir. Hmm? You need not have to collect all these things. You have to just select. Oh, that's one thing. I know that, but even then, what happens uh, if something doesn't come? What happens? It will be really difficult. Now. I'm collecting everything now. <laughs> just because of what? Just to ensure that everything is not. Now, let it take some time now. In the meantime, we'll now jump into the next topic. Now, we will now go for the manual holds and releases. And not the holds and releases. Uh, what we can see now. Uh, we will now go to the processing constraints. Okay? Holds and releases. Uh, and then the credit check will be uh, done together actually. Uh, we will now go to the processing constraints. <coughs> Let us now see the processing constraints. So we will now see a processing constraint. And the collection go on. <coughs> go there. And then in this place, if you go there, you go to the records now. Where is the processing constraint going I've made one file actually <clears throat> somewhere <is> there. <clears throat> yeah, it is here. I will not take a copy. No, when 23rd is a processing constraint now. I will, go there. I will not keep it on the main. So, paste it. <clears throat> so let us open up. So, what exactly is a processing constraint? Let us say we have shipped the product. Now, can you cancel the sales order? 
not possible at all because the already the middle is gone to the customer now. so if you cancel the customer cancel the sales order who is going to pay so cancellation of a sales order is not possible if it is already what happens it is already shipped right similarly what happens there are sealed pcs are there when right? these pcs are going to protect from what happens the tampering your sales order so here not will not see this we'll go there for us <clears throat> so now uh, uh, we have written one uh, fictitious one only fine another it may be a realistic one also if the requested ship date is less than the system date do not allow to submit the order at all fine. that is what the task is the task fine. so similarly whatever the customer will be giving so many tasks for which whatever uh, we can do or whatever he wants actually so i have done it on a b01 i will not do it now for a d01 actually <clears throat> go there so this is what the last so so many pcs custom pcs can be written by you actually. so we will now go to the task called manage processing constraints now fine go to the task fine take copy of it now we'll now go to the task <clears throat> so click on cancel now come out of it and then go there then we'll go to the task go to the system maintenance <clears throat> And then go there. Click on search. And then try to read all the seeded ones, seeded PCs. You always read, and then you will not have a good idea. So then, what happens? You can write your own PC also. So go to the manage processing constraints now. Here I am now going to create my custom PC. So it has got three tier pages. One is the constraints. One is the validation rules. One is the record set. So you now begin from the record set. So create a record set as below. I will not go to the record set and then I'm going to create one. So I will not go to the create record set, record set. And then let me create a record set. I click on plus. And remember, uh, whatever is the predefined, you cannot touch it at all. Fine. Whatever you have written, you can do it. Fine. The predefined ones, you cannot make a modification. Fine. These are all serial ones, you cannot modify it now. So whatever is the whatever you're creating it, you can do it. I go there. Click on plus. So let me go and then create a one. A record set I'm going to create. You'll understand it gradually. As and when you do it, whatever you do it. So I will not put the date. What happens? Uh, RSD, fine. Uh, RS date, fine. So requested ship date. This is what is now fine. Requested ship date, the one. So I will now name it in the exact fashion. Fine. Right to give a meaningful name so that what happens? You won't be getting confused. Fine. This is RS date. Right. This is a requested ship date actually. Fine. Uh, rather always give it in a good manner. I'm not like this. Not fine. But this is a, this is a training I'm doing. Fine. And then paste in the description. Fine. Paste in the description. So give a name for this now. Requested ship date. Now I go there. The short name I'm doing. Now I go there. The short name is what? I will not say. Uh, uh, what is the name I give? Now find D zero one uh, B zero D zero one underscore R B. Fine. D capital D zero one underscore R S B. Fine. That is the short name I'm given. I go there. The entity is what? Order header. Drop it down. Order header. <clears throat> At the header level I'm doing it. Now I go there. So we are now creating it. Now find the record set. Creating it. And then add an attribute for the following record in the bottom. Now find so after having given this, what happens? You go there and then add it for requested ship date. Right. So go there and then click on plus now. I'm not adding it. Now. Fine. For, you have to see whatever you have created, what happens? It has to come over here now. Fine. This has to come now. Fine. Then only what happens? You are creating an attribute for a particular record set actually. So even though I have not saved it, what happens? It's not coming. And go there. And go there. So you go there and then the attribute, what happens? The requested ship date. And drop it down. And then choose the requested ship date. There are plenty of things are there. So whatever is required, first of all, you have to analyze what are the things you can do it now. Accordingly, you can do it. Requested ship date. So the requested ship date is there. Fine, go there, and that's it. What happens? You go there, and then what happens? Tab region, and then uh, and then create a validation set as below. Now after having done this, what happens? You have to save. Click on save. It is all same. Now we will now create a validation rule set. The record set is going to work on this requested ship date. Now. The record set is going to work on the requested ship date now. So what happens was you go to the validation rule set. You are given a save now. Fine, go there. You go to the validation set. So go to this place. Go to the validation set. And then create a validation rule set. Below. Fine, go there. We are going to create the validation. So click on plus and then we will now create a validation rule. Fine, go there. Click on plus. The validation rule set. What happens? I am going to create plus. Go there. So what is the name? B zero one RSD validation. Fine, go there. It's a D zero one. Fine. It is a record ship date underscore validation. Always give a meaningful name everywhere. Fine. And then try to develop the habit of what happens. The naming and naming convention is, is an art actually. Go there. Paste it on this place. No fine. Go there. Go there. Go there. Short name. What I have given there. Fine. Is a V A L. It is a D zero one underscore V A L. Go there. The validation type is a table. And then order header. Drop it down. It's a table now. <clears throat> and the entity is what order header. You go through the document. It will be explaining you all the love values basically. Fine. What are the things? What it can do? Everything it is explained there. 
is that you have to sit and patiently read it because you when you are writing a custom piece you must know about what all the values you can populate on each and everything and then what does it mean everything is written there in the implementation guide so you go there you are given this number and then add the validation details in the bottom as the requested ship date is less than this date fine this so the validation will be performed for this fine the validation will be performed for the requested ship date less than this date so in the bottom what happens click on the validation details this is this is what it is going to validate you go down and then choose the requested ship date now so requested ship date <coughs> Go there. You go there, and then whatever is less than this is date. So string is what this is date. <coughs> Caps lock S Y S D A T. That's it. Fine. Go there. So this is now going to be checked, and then what happens? You go there. You now pick up from the table on this thing. Fine. We we'll give a save. So we have created a record set for the requested ship date, and then we have now created a validation for the notes. So both things are now created. Now we will now write the constraint actually. At this stage, if you don't generate the package, the validation will not be available on the constraints at all. So if you don't generate it, so if you don't generate it, whatever I not, not generated it, so I go to the constraints directly. I have to get this validation over there. I have now only given a save now, and then if you don't generate it, go to the constraints area, and then here I am going to create a constraint. So here, go to constraints tab and then create a constraint as below. So here we will not try to correct find the B zero one R S date now. Fine. <coughs> Click on plus now. So I will know for a change what happened. I will put everything on this one. Go there. D zero one underscore. Fine. The requested ship date. <coughs> underscore. Fine. It is R S D A T. No giving one second. D A T. Fine date. Oh, everything is now coming in the caps. Basically, whether <laughs> I write it on smaller, this thing is now coming in caps. Now, basically, and then display name is what uh, uh, D zero one R S D. Is a D. Okay, the D zero one, and then I will say underscore R S D. Go there, and then the constrained entity. Fine, go there, drop it down. Fine, go there. It is what it is order header now. Constraining it is order head now. So constraint operations what submit now upon submit it will be making a check now. Fine, upon submit whatever. There are plenty of operations on that. So on which what happens we can now to fire this constraint now. So this constraint will be firing on these activities actually. Fine, I know, but upon submit it will not fire. So here if you go and then see uh, not allowed and then all rows. Fine, go there and then the bottom what happens when you do it your validation rule set will not be available. Now. I know, go there. I will not go there. Go there. This place what happens? I will not give a plus now. <coughs> So here I will now say group number is what one now. You go to the validation entity and then order header. Order header. Order header. And then you go there and then you will now put the validation uh, rule set now and go there. If you drop down your rule set will not be available at all because what happens it has not been what happens is generated actually. So once when the validation rule set is not what happens it will not be coming over here. So we have to generate then only come now and go there. So I will not leave it as such now. I will not see whether it remains there or not. Was good the validation rules at all? Oh God, it is not allowing at all. Or I will not give a cancel. So give a cancel. I can come back. The validation rules at as soon as it make made what I was here to do the compilation. I go to the validation rules that is already made now. And now see how it is now. That is a mess. Oh God, there are plenty of there now. So it's giving. So we have a query also. Fine, go there. Click on the query. Then no query also. There is a deep. No, still you are in constraint, Nana. You have to go to validation. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still in constraint. Have to go to the validation rules and then query. Yeah, it is there. It is there. So now let me generate the package. So only when you generate the package, the validation rule set can be put on the constraint actually. So the request is now completely not working. Now let us go to the constraint. It's not running. Go there. Click on it. So by the time I come to the place, what happens? It will be created actually. Can go there. So here. Uh, in this place, B zero when R's date now. D zero one. Oh. D. So you are in filter, sir. You have to create a new one. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> I'm not doing the query mode. Please correct me whenever I'm making mistake. Buddha over here. I'm not having. <laughs> Go there. This is what I see. You know what? This is D zero one underscore R S. Uh, date. Everything is coming. Okay, then we'll take it off. Bit. Uh, I'm not display name. I will say it's a uh, caps D zero one. Let's go R S D. <coughs> constraining entity. What happens? The order header now. And then constraint operation is what submit. 
and then uh, what else is there? Then go there and see stuff. And what is not a lot. All roles and then what is enabled? Okay, what is what is? So everything is there. Now for this D zero one RSD, then click on plus now. So group number is one now, and then give it tab now. What is it? This one. This field is what is the order header actually. Then go there, drop it down, and then make it the order header. So there are plenty of things that I can go there. So validation set now it will be available. You can see it's not correct. So previously, before uh, once when a validation rule set is made, you have to generate it. Then only it will be done. It was not previously coming and go there. Generate it. So do is coming and go there. It is a, the scope is any all these things. What happens? You have to make uh, we go through the document and then tell you what are the things there. In the record set. What happens? We will not put our record set. Our record set is going to be what happens? Protected actually. It is going to protect this record set. This record set has got only what that uh, ship date is it? Record set requested ship date. So we can even what happens? Uh, create our own. Fine, go there. Uh, we can even make multiple records to be monitored actually. So that all the permutations, combinations, everything is written, the implementation created. Now I will not say what I was, I will not say Nana. First put a message now into that. Right. RSD <coughs> cannot be less than this data. <coughs> it is only a message. I am not putting it. So I am putting a message. So if you put RSD as a less than this date, what happens? It will not work. So this way, what happens? Our custom, uh, what happens? Our PC is now created. Click on save, and then again you have to generate. Then go there, you have to generate. So it's now save. So it has now generated and then save. So click on generate package. You have to generate the package. So the concurrent program is now running. So once when the package is now run, what happens? We have to go and then see on this whether it it is now completed or not. There are so many complex ways of writing it actually. People say that what happens the PC itself is a big topic. In EBS also, here also what happens is a big one. Because customers will be asking you to write a custom PC for so many protections basically. Uh, you know, go there, this place, you know, go and then straight away create a sales order and see click on this open. So click on order management and then there's no create a sales order. So click on create order. <clears throat> So go there, it's a D01 now. <clears throat> Sir? Yeah. Is there any built attribute mapping concurrent like that, sir? Yeah, there are concurrent mapping. What is it? What are the order question? Built attribute mapping. After you make any change in process concern, we will run that request in EBS, correct, sir? No, no, here nothing is required. There is only generate. There also generate, here also generate. The generate okay. is not enough, and that is more than sufficient. Fine, sir. D0101 and then give a tab now. The generate is sufficient. Click on it now. So click on add now. I go to the warehouse now. Go to click on it. I'm not popping the warehouse now. Click on the supply area. I'm not popping it. What? T01 is 1. And the general area, what happens? I will not make less than this day. What is today's date? It's 17th. I will not go there and then make it as 14th. 14th I made. Now, once when I save, nothing will happen. But once when you submit, the PC will fire actually. Because that is the event on which whatever it has to fire now. At the time, it will now act as a watchdog and then see all the sales orders. So click on submit now. So it should not allow me to what happens to go to the next stage at all. Click on submit now. Go there. I'm not submitting it. <clears throat> so you see, order processing constraint. A, a user defined validation failed for the following. Nana, RSD cannot be less than the system. And remember, writing this is a big task actually. There will be so many requirements will be coming from customers. You have to read uh, what happens the document for how much, how many record sets has to be monitored, how many validation sets you have to create, and then how many constraints you have to create. Find everything you have to do it now. What happens in a, in a combi combined fashion, and then what happens? Uh, protect your sales orders from any tampering. In fact, what happens? One of my students uh, in EBIS. He was recruited in England only for writing his own custom, custom PCs. He's a big company, and then they have so many what happens the restrictions coming in every one week or every one month. At least, at least one uh, thing will be coming. But on the other days, what happens? He'll be simply playing cards or something like that. That, that, that laptop. <laughs> but he's, he's played very really because he knows how to write this. Basically, excellently he used to write. So here, what happens? There you need some amount of technical knowledge. Here there is no such a technical knowledge required. Actually, when you know the uh, whatever the functionalities of all the record sets, validation sets, and constraints, you can write an effective PC. Got it? So, this completes the processing constraints. Okay, I will not go there. I have the link that uh, validation rule anywhere in the sales order. Once we created the 
constant, it will automatically, automatically. Also, you generate it, it will not start to make a watchdog. And the, when the event fires, no, fine. There, can, even on the enter also, you can fire it. On submit, you can fire it. There are so many events which you have seen, no, fine. So those events, you can now choose it. And then once when the event occurs, this will not start to monitor the sales order. Actually. Okay. There is no need to run any concurrence. Anymore. Go there and then delete otherwise whatever the IMS will be having a problem. So we please delete all the things whatever you are creating because what happens you are working on a common one and then uh, you would have created so many and then uh, it will not stop others basically. Fine, you are to go to the search and then what happens? You go to the manage processing constraints. So have the habit of immediately delete manage percentage. Right? Processing constraints. Right? Processing percentage. C O M S P. Enter it now. So you go to the manage processing constraints and then it does not delete mine. I go to this place, I will not select and then let me delete. So click on X, distribute. And then read all the seeded ones now, fine. That will give you a lot of ideas. So there are plenty of seeded ones on, that. on the validation rules. It's all over. Let me delete now. It was selected. And then let me delete now. And then pass it also. So please have it as a habit so that what happens, others can work on it now. And when you create your own PC, people may not be understanding why my sales order is not progressing, it's not throwing so many errors, this thing, that thing. And then do it. And then after deletion of all, what happens is generated. Can't we disable Nana instead of deleting? No, I don't think so. Disable or drafting. I don't think so. I don't think you have to only uh, is there any, because there is no such a disable functionality here. Preferably, what happens in the training instance, you can do it now. But when you are going into the production, you, can, you are only your team only is going to monitor this now. The PC rating is will be with, in the hands of somebody. One, what happens? Uh, the super users of your uh, team will be only handling it, so they can very well monitor it. But for the training, what happens? You better delete it. Click on generate package. You try to find out whether any disabling is there or not. That is what I have written. In one yes. of the training, it happened for me. What happened is that everybody wrote so many PCs, Barbara, and one day I sat and then deleted everything. So please, after completing this, uh, and the training will not go because people will not try to RD on so many things. It was giving an issue everywhere. Uh, line level submitting, afterwards, what happens? We do something else is not working. So many messages are popping up now. <laughs> So please uh, delete it because you are working on a common instance and so on. Otherwise, what happens? You're getting a big problem for you. <clears throat> yeah, because in uh, in inventory or product information management, we have an option to uh, disable or draft the rules. So yeah, just ask. I'm not sure about it. Fine. Make a warranty on this one. Fine. Whether you sure. can disable this, uh, what happens? Your constraint or not? Fine. Just make a check of it. If it's uh, disabled, also is okay. Fine. Because you, know, you can even use it later. Actually, fine. that's correct. So if they have a disable option, it will be possible for us to use it again. And whenever you're doing it, what happens? You document it. So that uh, how we have done it like that, what happens in this one, I have done it in a documentation. So if you make one documentation later on, what happens, you will know, if you want to reproduce the same results, we can immediately go there and then do it. Oh God, which entity we are given now, fine, on submit or what, on the order header or not. And if you keep one documentation, one simple screenshot and then keep it with you for your own records, it will be easy for you to reproduce even if uh, what happens, something has gone. Actually. Because whatever you have done with a great effort, with all the record sets, everything you have created, fine, you just keep one, one copy of each and everything. That will be very useful for you when you want to maintain this later on. So close it now. So let us now go there and then see whether the item is correct or not. Click on it. Item might have been correct. So click on it. And then I will go to the supply chain planning and then go to the plan input. So then query for the item. You will now see where kit and other things would have come over here because I made a complete one. Find that is a D01. And then click on search now. Find. The 0109 is there. Find. You will now see for this. D011. So the laptop carry case, everything has come. And both the arcs, it has come. Extend one to both our carry case and everything. And then I will know query for the D0109 also. <coughs> D0109. Then click on search now. And search. So once when you search for it, what is also coming. Now let us now perform a refresh and start. I just hate this activity. <coughs> but unfortunately, I don't have any other good thing to cancel. It. Let us now go there and then go to the scheduling process. Then do it. Go to the scheduling process. And remember, we don't have any stock for that. What happened? The shippable items actually. We'll not see, but how it's going to work. Now. Click on the scheduling process. I will now go and then do the refresh and start for this. Okay. So let me do it fast. Everything I'm doing it now. 
because on one of the customers, one of the items, and I'm not sure about it now. But So once when the refresh and start is completed, what happens? We are now going to create a sales order. So in this place, if you go on and see now, find whether now I don't have any stock of the laptop as well as the carry case. Now the reservation will fail actually. But afterwards, what happens? I will now receive the item into the inventory, and then I will now run a concurrent called what happens? Uh, start real time updates. So once when you run the concurrent, what happens? You need not have to what happens? Do the collection and refresh after populating the stock in the inventory. Because if you go, let's see this place now. <clears throat> go there. In this place, if you go on the run this one, and go there. If you go to the collect planning data, the collect planning data is for two types of objects now. Basically, one for the static data. This is the static data. The reference data are all static. The customers, currencies, demand class, everything is there. If you go to the supply planning, what happens? It's called a dynamic data. So dynamically, the change is fine. So whenever there is a change of the dynamic data, no need to collect. If you run the what happens? Start real time updates. That itself will now take care of collection plus refresh. So both the things are done together actually. So we can even uh, what happens? Uh, program that now. Right? That is going to run fast when compared to the collection actually. So what Dasaradhan is saying is that the collection program run for two hours for him when you go for a targeted one. When you go for a targeted one, he's saying that take two hours and that will be a big performance issue actually. And so you have to resolve that. Oracle is already working on it. Right? They want to reduce this time basically. Uh, they, when I attended the training in uh, Redwood shows in US now, uh, they told me just like that. What happens? They know that whatever within ten minutes time the collection will be done. It's a bullshit. Then, then now only I understand. Right? When you have hundred thousand items, what happens? It says he's saying that what happens? It takes around two hours. Time. So that in that case, what happens? You cannot work on it. Now. So see it. Try to optimally correct. That is very very important. And there is only yeah. Every day we are struggling, Nana. Oh God! In EBS R12 itself, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of uh, customer is uh, is a big customer, and uh, they are uh, having a huge number of items, like you know, more than 150 thousand, one lakh, one lakh fifty thousand items. Every day inventory will increase each and every warehouses, mm -hmm. and we have adopted ATP and GOP, mm -hmm. so obviously. We have to collect the collection. Otherwise, our sales order will not schedule at all. Oh, so every day, it's you know, it's a painful task. Oh, God. These things has to be represented to Oracle directly. They have to be very strong. The customer, if they speak in a very strong word, they will not listen. If the implementers are speaking, what happens? They will not give word. They will not. They will not listen to it. Actually. The customer has to speak. Are you giving me money back? Like that, what happens? If they start to do it, they will not try to attend to it, and then what happens? They will not make a change. Just for a sales order. Right. Collection is a big overhead actually. Mm. If they know that this you know fusion functionality, mm. I don't think so. They are, they are ready to upgrade to fusion now. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really very difficult there, right? So you people will be having a tough time in the field with order management actually. Fine, be ready for that now. <laughs> because what happens when I was there in Kuwait and then implementing it, what happens? The customer success manager from Oracle has clearly told, Nana, Kaise bhi samalo. Do not bring me into the picture at all. He wanted him to. He wanted to escape. When uh, the customer is saying, "What happens? I should never say talk to Oracle at all." That is what he is saying. Don't refer our Oracle name at all. You try to solve it. How to solve? And there is a problem. If I can do, I can definitely do. When the system itself is not responding, how to solve? And my manager also started banging because I was the local project manager, and then our head office was uh, shouting at me, "No, no, no, no!" Time and again, you are referring Oracle. I try to stop that referring Oracle. Bob, how to do that here? If I know a solution, I will never refer it to Oracle at all. I will, I will only keep on raising SRC. Right? I will never tell the customer that what happens, you go on and talk to Oracle. But unfortunately, this is a problem. I had a big firing and then uh, even had sat on the meeting and then see you give a solution now. Right? If I don't say I have to avoid that statement, that is what he's saying. Some more other avoid it. <laughs> oh god. Now what happens? We go there and then create a sales order. Right? Click on it. Click on it. We'll now go to the order management area. <clears throat> okay, I don't want to take this topic and the fag end of the time because what happens? It takes a longer time. Than so I will now do this sales order creation of this. What happens? It will be collected now. I will be doing it tomorrow as such. 
because it will take another 20 minutes for me to complete all the activities on this one. So I don't want to do it now because everything has to be what I must have pushed into AR and then we have to see the AR invoice also. So this is the complete cycle which you have to see for a kit actually. So let me take it up tomorrow such on Monday. So any other doubts? So uh, we have Sindhil here and then if you have any questions to Sindhil, you can ask him. Not he comes only on Saturday actually. He's already implementing a solution for what I'm one of our company who is not having a GOP actually. Non-GOP, sir. No, non-GOP, without GOP, sorry. Non-GOP. <laughs> you don't bring it for a non-GOP. Hey, Sindhil, how is your experience? How do you find uh, uh, the customer? Uh, are they happy with the product of order management? Or No, sir. What yeah. they are saying, yeah. Now we are using Benzcart. You force me to take Bullock Cart. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So Sir, they, have uh, they have forced him to take a bullet cart now. <laughs> That's what he's saying. <laughs> Sir, okay. I don't, know. I don't have exposure in GOP, sir. So yes, of now straight away I landed in non-GOP products. Non-GOP product. But as such, what happens? Uh, uh, the customer is uh, already working on uh, Ebiz Auto, or otherwise he is uh, totally new to uh, Oracle. No, sir. They are using 11 in nearly 30 years, sir. Oh, 11 they were using it. It will be very difficult if some functionality is not available, and then they know compare, 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 and then they say, Hurry, 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 Then you know, keep on raising the SRs only. <laughs> and remember, sometime back when you put the price, it took three hours for me to realize the price on the sales order. I spoke to Oracle. How to do it? The sales of the salesman is you know, giving a new price and then ask him to sit for three hours. That's a really horrible. Now they have improved the price. It, it comes up almost immediately now. <clears throat> so they should have done all these things in the beginning itself. You know how much of struggle I had now. Fine. <clears throat> Similarly, what about there are certain functionalities which are really uh, not that admirable in the fusion actually. And especially with the non GOP uh, thing, what happens? Uh, there are so many. The on hand stock is not coming. So, Sindhil has already raised SR. Uh, what is the state of the SR, uh, Sindhil? Sir, uh, on hand stock, uh, they suggested to use extension processor. So, oh, just oh, like. Uh, with an extension, uh, uh, Oracle extensions, uh, we can print the on hand stock. Huh? Yes, sir. So, and, uh, you need to customize the page also, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, in that uh, home page, we have icon, correct, sir? Like uh -huh. that, they suggested to, to create one icon. If you click that icon, it straight away land up in your online stock screen. Oh, oh, oh. like that, with the use of extension. Sendil, this is Sai. A small question. So, yes, sir. Please. Do you know that? Can we differentiate anywhere that whether it is GOP or non GOP? In yeah, yeah, yeah. How to differentiate it? Yeah? If an instance has got a, is a GOP license, uh -huh. where to differentiate it? You know it? Hello, sir. Sir, uh, uh, I'm unable to understand. Uh, how to purchase the GOP or not? How to see it on the front end, actually? Sir, no, sir. Actually, there, uh, there is one checkbox, sir. I will give the, uh, sir, I will have so, that screen, sir, on that. Monday, sir. Let me, oh, okay, yeah, Monday. You will not get it. You don't know ready-made. Yes, yeah. Thank you, sir. So, if you know ready-made, I can even show it to you. Now it's a long basic. Actually, in that uh, specific, uh, actually, the uh, GOP checkbox, if unchecked means uh, non GOP, sir. But uh, there is no such thing at all in the GOP area. If you go on Monday, I will share that screen, sir. Okay. Monday, I will share that screen, sir. Okay, tell me. So, Sandil has already shared the what's called his email ID on the chat. So, all of you, uh, you can uh, take a copy of it and then what happens, you can even later on interact with him. He's a very nice guy, actually. He helps everybody. <clears throat> And some of the things I learned from me from him now, right? I am a teacher for him, he is a teacher for me. Now. No, sir. No way, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's not at all possible for me, sir. <laughs> Nana, you are always guru for everyone, Nana. <laughs> whatever wh whatever we learn in the real uh, you know uh, real experience, uh, still I know I'm still I'm you know uh, going through your original Levene video where I you know started. <laughs> Definitely is helping, you know, still <laughs> after 12 years. <laughs> oh, years. Oh, God. <laughs> sir, I strongly do that, sir. I do strongly agree that one, sir. Thank you. Thanks for compliments. No, okay. <laughs> In fact, mm -hmm. what, I, what I teach is uh, only basics, actually. I don't have much of a knowledge on the in-depth of it. But uh, if the basics are sound, then what happens? You can now do an R&D and then you can very well explore it to a great extent. Nana is a demigod for all of us. <laughs> Nana, 
it's been less than a month, but you're a very humble person and a very great teacher. That's what I, I think from what I have seen. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for anybody? Hi, Nana Santoshi here. Not a question, Nana, just a word or like what I feel is more than a teacher, you are a great person. <laughs> like Appa, like coming out and helping out of the box is yeah, yeah. she had like, a problem with procurement. <laughs> one of the solution. It was really great, Nana. I could like hardly find a person like you who helps people like this. <laughs> Having knowledge, they keep by with themselves. <laughs> no, like they won't share the knowledge. Exactly. Yeah. That is the problem in this industry. Also. Yeah. Very difficult. There are very good experts are available. But uh, they will not even open their mouths. So it's true, it's true, Nana. Yeah. It, it is really great, Nana. Thanks, thanks, Lo. Thank you. Anything else? Otherwise, we'll call it a day now. We'll now meet on Monday evening at uh, 9 30 pm. And tomorrow's a holiday. So, what are the next product you're learning, sir? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, next product. I'm not having mood in the time, basically. But when, when this thing, whatever, I want to learn planning central. I, I know manufacturing in the half, halfway. I have not gone through it. I have able to set up manufacturing actually, but I have to learn a lot of the manufacturing. So, this, this, this was the modules and then afterwards, what I was saying. Many people are asking for projects also. Uh, I don't know when I will now sit and then learn all this thing. <laughs> Take some time. We will give you all the required documents. You just study and teach us. That's enough. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. So thanks and then uh, bye now, fine, uh, for all your uh, compliments, basically, I thank all of you. And then we'll now bye and then we'll now meet on uh, Monday night at 9.30 p.m. Bye, Nana. Thank you. Bye, Nana. Thanks, Nana. Yeah. Thanks, Nana. Have a great Sunday. Bye. Thanks, Nana. Bye, Nana. Bye, Nana. Bye. Thank you.